In this session, we'll use SubAssembly Composer to start building a custom part. I'm going to start by coming over to the toolbox. Here's where I can select items to build my subassembly. I'm going to start by using a point. I'll click, hold, and drag this over into the flowchart, and I'll drop it right beneath the start icon right here. Start represents the insertion point. Now that I've dropped that, if I come down to the properties, let me drag this up, I can see that I've placed point number one and I could change that if I wanted to. I can see that that point is placed relative to the origin, and it is located based on the delta xy. You can see there's other options here. We'll look at some of these as we go. And currently the xy measurements are zero, so essentially point one is located at the origin. Let me drag this back down, and we'll add another point. I'll drag this over and drop it below the first one. Now when you place these in, you can see how they're all connected. I can drag these objects around if I want to. I can also use my arrow keys to kind of clean things up. I'm going to do that. I'll pick point one there and I'll push that up a little bit tighter. And I'll take point two. Let me select that and I'll push that up a little tighter as well. Okay, so I've just added a second point. Let's come down to properties. I can see it's point number two. It is placed relative to point one. I could also make it relative to any other point that occurs before it. I'm going to make it relative to point one, and I'd like to place this, we'll say that we're going to create a lane, and my lane is going to be 12 feet wide, and we'll say it has a 2% cross slope. So I would like point two placed via slope and delta x, and my slope is going to be negative 2%. My delta x, or my distance in the x direction, is going to be 12. Let me press enter. So I've just placed point 2. Let's come over to the preview area, and I'll choose fit to screen. And you can see the geometry that I've created. I dropped point 1. There's point 2 was placed relative to point 1. And you can see that I have a link here now as well. Why is that? If I drag down through the properties, you can see that when you place a point, if it's relative to another point, you can automatically have it add a link. So that's what happened. So there's the top of my lane. I'd like to take care of the lane thickness at this time. Let me drag my flow chart down, just working with my small real estate here. Let's add another point. I'll drag another point in and drop it below. This point is point number three. Let's drag this up. That's point three. I would like to place point three relative to point two, and we'll make it delta x, delta y. I don't want to move it anything left or right, but I do want to move it down. We'll give the pavement a thickness of negative one for right now. Let me press enter. Let me mention that Subassembly Composer is not units specific. So when I say negative one, if I insert this subassembly into Civil 3D, that's in, into an imperial drawing, it's going to be feet. And if I dropped it into metric, it would be one meter. So keep that in mind when you're creating your parts. Now that I've made that negative one, we can see how that's drawn here. Let's add another one on the other side. We'll just drag this down a little bit. I'll drop it down here. I can also zoom this in and out. Let me drop that down to 50%, just because I'm dealing with a small screen. And let me see if I can arrow that. There we go. So there's point P4. I want that placed relative to point P1. And we're going to go delta X, delta Y with a delta Y of negative 1. Fantastic. All I have to do is connect the dots here down at the bottom. I am going to drag in a link. We'll drag the link over. I'll drop that in. We'll take and push this up into position. There we go. This link is going to be link 4. And I am going to have it drawn from point P4 to P3. There we go. So I've just created a basic lane shape. Remember that subassemblies are built from points, links, and shapes. So I've got some points, I've got some links. Let's create a shape. I can do that by dragging a shape object over, and I'll drop that in my flowchart. Notice when you drop it, we get this exclamation point. It tells me that there's a shape there, but it doesn't have links to define it yet. We can see down here in properties, I could actually enter the links in here, L1, L2, L3, L4, or I could just click this green block put my cursor inside that closed shape and click. So at this point, I have a simple lane. I could take and insert this into Civil 3D and use it for a roadway. Maybe I could use it for sidewalk. I could use it for virtually any place where I want a rectangular shape. One thing to consider, if I was to place this in Civil 3D, it is 100% static. This will always be 12 feet wide. It will always be one foot thick. It will always have a slope of negative 2%. In the next session, we're going to look at how we can create variables such that we can control these measurements when we're in Civil 3D.